Well, the title of our text this morning is I'm Counting Down from Seven. Oh, y'all can laugh. I'm counting down from seven. If I go from seven to one, then I can get done and we can get to eating. Is that all right? Oh, no, but the Holy Spirit gave it. You'll see. Just hang in there with us. We're counting down from seven. The subtext is seven steps to empowering family and friendships. Amen? Now, this is Exacting Truth Ministries, meaning that we believe implicitly in expounding upon and presenting the truth. So, words and their meaning have evolved with time. And we're going to bring your attention particularly to two terms, family and friends. Although these words have evolved over time, regarding vernacular, that means when you change the audible meaning of a word without changing its written meaning. So that's where slang and where colloquialisms and where euphemisms come from. We'll say that a beautiful woman in our lives, fellas, is bad when we mean that she look good. I need y'all to talk back to me because this seven words is going to take longer if y'all don't respond. See, that's vernacular. We mean something different than what the origin of the word meant in its etymological reality. So words have evolved, but I want to let you all know something very importantly. They have also devolved. Now, the modern meaning of the term devolved is utilized in the English lexicon as something being transferred, Dr. Small, or something being moved over. That doesn't seem to... Uh, intimidating does it when you're moving something but we need to go to the etymological origin of devolved because the origin of the word originally meant to cause to roll downward and unfortunately our understanding at least how we represent and we walk and manifest regarding these two terms family and friends in many senses now you can always find an anecdotal or a singular random example of where families and friendships is thriving, but we live in generalities, do we not? That's the reason why if all of a group of culture seemingly in a majority of a sense is suffering some to some degree, ain't nobody worried about your one life on the hill living sumptuously with billions because the rest of the people are suffering. Because this world is not driven by anecdotal examples, it's driven by generalities. In our constitution, it talks about taking care of the general welfare. That don't mean giving out handouts, that means it's generally everybody faring well. So when we look at family and friends, I got to get done because some of y'all already sleepy. When we look at family and friends, the terminology has devolved rather than evolve to be something that, in, 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 that, that you can imagine notes unity and love and togetherness. Our families are becoming fractured, and subsequently our communities are suffering for it. Can somebody say amen, or do y'all live in a euphoria that I need tickets to? So, when we look at these two terms, what are we looking at in origin? The etymology of the noun family derives from the Latin term familia. Now, watch this. This is interesting. I didn't really know this myself until I looked into it. Familia describes unity, relationship now, but in origin it meant servant. In origin, don't eat out of my hands. We say that here because you don't know where man's hands has been. So, in origin... When they said familiar, they meant that somebody not only that was doing duty and service, Brother Charles, I just like talking to people that I'm in front of. Don't, I'm not trying to put nobody on the spot. So when they talked in origin about family and they used originally familiar, they meant the person that was serving the family, Lady Smalls. They meant the person who actually was doing domestic work. I'm not talking about a slave necessarily. I'm talking about someone who took the responsibility of caretaking in the family. Now, when we look at the actual meaning, how much effort has gone into making sure that we're serving each other? All right, my time is already almost up, so let me move on to the next one. The next word is friend. The, etym the etymological origin of the noun friend in the English lexicon actually derives from the Gothic, frijon, meaning to love. 
That's why we made the comment, see, everything is calculated no matter how sparse or crass one of my comments is before we actually get into the text, Sister Brenda. We, we already had calculated our steps, and when we talked about do you have a friend that's sticking closer than a brother, it's because our view of friend has devolved because your friendship with folk got limits. Y'all help me get done. Huh? Now, some of y'all got perfect friends, and you can count on them forever and for whatever, and they're not fair weather, and they're the embodiment of all of them good songs by Boys the Men and, 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 and New Edition and everything. But I'm telling you right now that if we were to stick to the brass tacks of what the word was in origin, the word means love. Are you in love with your friends? I mean that appropriately. Pause. That's what the kids say now. I'm past 50, but it's like, you know, so won't nobody mistake you. Pause. Are you in love with your friend? Some of y'all are like, mm hmm you looking at your spouse. Are you in love with your friend, baby? Do you love your friend? Do you love them better than me? When we're talking about love, we're talking about from the Greek agapeo. That is the most highest love as was spoken of in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's not our emotional love or how we feel. It, it's the reason why transliterally the scholars picked charity when they transliterated the Greek into the English because charity means to give of substance of yourself voluntarily. So when you say agape, his love doesn't just emote or feel, his love gives. Are we giving in our friendships? I'm not trying to put myself on the pedestal because y'all who know me know that it's not cheap to be around me. I'm just going to let y'all imagine what that means. Stuff costs, beloved. I'm just not going to even front. Y'all pray for me. But my brother Christian called on me. I'm not putting myself on the pedestal. It's just a good example. And he said, I'm on the other side of the world. And I know he didn't say this, but I was thinking this. Hermina probably was thinking this because she know her brother. I know how busy you are, but I know, you know, that, you know, you know? So, but, so I called some other people, not because we're not qualified to help him, but it's like before I call Brother Solaire, Hermina, who else? Is Jose free? Because Brother Solaire, if, if we don't give him enough notice, he might not be available. I love you. I'm just telling the truth. I said, where you at? I ain't going to tell where it is. That is his business. I'm on another side of the world. Can you help me, brother? I said, yeah, no problem. Because friendship and when you love and when a person is in need and it's not a lot they can do about it, I wasn't going to do nothing but watch the game, Dr. Rodney. I had to go see about my brother and my sister. Dr. Rodney, let me put him on the spot, <clears throat> was like, Doc, we need you. We're trying to bring, he's got, God has called him to bring the community together, to bring people together, to bring the body of Christ together in his own way. So, but he knows his little brother. He knows, uh, you know, that it costs. And brother, he's brother Solaire, we can have in this service, but I said, well, Doc, what's the budget? I said, I'll tell on myself if y'all want. And he's like, well, Doc, you know me if it was me, but, you know, they said it's thus and so forth. Can you help? I said, we're friends. We have a friendship that has love and support. Dr. Smalls was serious. I'm trying to do this for the community. I said, Doc, I got you. Are our friendships conditional or do we love, which means the basis is that we give? Seven steps so I could sit down. I've already been up too long. Number one, and my brother Scotty is here, my brother from another mother. Lord knows we talk to one another like three times a year, but we are deep family. Bless you, Prophet Scotty. And I know that I can rely on him and he can rely on me. Another quick example, my father has been going through. Y'all pray for Bishop Solera, our man senior. But he lives close to Scotty now. And Scott was like, let me see. Something's happening to Bishop. Uh, I can get there probably in less than an hour. Let me know if I need to go. Somebody, and he's astute, high stature in his job and position, blessed man of God, but he was ready to drop everything said, you can't be away, be there, your father's in another state, but I can get to him if you need me to get to him. See, that's a friendship, but a lot of our friendships, is, let me check the schedule, I don't like you know how. Y'all see my phone, ain't nothing put up on my phone, but we real good at acting like, you know, this thumb ain't swiping nothing. Seven steps, what time is it? Yeah. Seven steps, seven principles, 
in empowering family and friendships. We want to leave here today. We're real close to eating, y'all. I promise. How y'all doing online? One, the first step, communication. In the Hebrew book of Isaiah, chapter 1, a young messenger of the Most High Isaiah, the prophet, was raised up to address the grave missteps and rebellious disposition that the chosen nation of Judah had adopted, which, placing it mildly, placed Judah in a strategic disadvantage, notably with nations such as the emerging world power, which was Babylon at that specific time. And no different than today, the leaders of households were directly culpable in the decay which placed Judah at this market disadvantage with Babylon, for example, before the 70-year captivity. Beloved, our communication needs help. I'm going to move on to two because I got to sit down. But we can sit back and act like our communication is perfect, but our children are saying in this day and time, they don't want to get married because they're looking at our relationships. Can somebody say amen? I got a true message. Y'all should have danced during the opening praise. I'm not going to dance you. My actually ministry is a teaching ministry, as you can see. So I'm moving on to two, but y'all, let's just say and be humble. That's one of the numbers. Uh, Nene, that's my little sister. Can we just say that we need to communicate better? We all look cute now. Y'all got on y'all makeup, and I got on all this blue polo, and I wore these for Pastor Smalls back to the motherland. But I want to let y'all know right now that all of our communication could use some work. Can we talk about on a ministry scale since we're multiple ministries in this house? That's why some of us got some of the best singers in the city, but we ain't got ushers. Usher. That's why some of us get super ushers, but we ain't got a musician to save our life. Some of us is in between pastors because the communication has an issue and that needs to change and improve on every scale. SpongeBob know our kids better than I'm going to two. 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 Where is two? Humility. Humility. Beloved, in large part, as a society, we're no longer humble. The Christ stated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 5, this is the New Living Translation, God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. How are we going to inherit our due justice and what the Holy Spirit has deeded us if we are not meek and humble? Oh, I haven't, thought, I haven't forgotten my thought. I'm just trying to think about all of us who are going to calculate our Instagram followers after the service is over with. Everybody who's going to see, no matter how young or old, Charles, how popular we are on TikTok. Well, you better check now because they're getting ready to check TikTok. We need to humble. We need to become low. Or the Heavenly Father might have to humble us. Hello, someone. Number three. Charity, we already covered that. Charity is a love that gives. It's not just a feeling. Four, identity. Dr. Smalls, I got to dwell on this for about 30 seconds. Identity. Do you really know who you are? Because one of the reasons why we're suffering on the job, I'm not talking to one nation or one culture. I'm talking about how many people, don't raise your hand, has had a problem with your supervisory uh, people that are over top of you? How many of y'all have suffered injustices on the job? One of the reasons is because you may not even be in the job that the Holy Spirit called you to be in because you don't know who you are. Y'all better check, look in the mirror, go to the Word, get on your knees, and find out who the Heavenly Father has called you to be because one of the reasons why it's so easy to exploit us as a community and as communities is because we're leaving it up to somebody else to define who we are and to set the narrative of who we're supposed to be. Our children are looking at we, this is family and friends, they like we're crazy because you are sitting up in society and interacting, say they bold at home but they won't stand up for themselves in the community. They telling us to do as I do. You know, and do as I say and not as I do, but they putting all of these people in office that don't have our best interests in mind. And we wouldn't feel like that we just got to take whatever the Democrats or the Republicans or the independents give us if we knew that we were children of God. Here am I at three, four, I'm almost done. Five is next, thank you, y'all right identity identity i had to dwell on that sister cheryl 
Some of us have been married a long time. We need to be celebrating, but we find ourselves not y'all. I'm just saying I talk to the people who is in front of me. But in general, we got marriages and relationships that's out there where you looking and y'all no longer know who one another is any longer. You celebrating 50 and y'all talking about at 51, we're going to break up. Do you know who you are? You brothers, y'all not that man that has that midlife crisis that's trying to drive a Corvette and he can't see? Come on, somebody. Do you know who you are? Oh, I'm an equal opportunity offender, ladies. Do you need a platinum rig with real gold in it? You can barely walk. I'm not telling you how to live. I don't control people, not at Exacting Truth Ministries. But what does your hair really look like underneath all that? Let, let me get back to the... No, 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 no. I, I know I, some of y'all ain't going to want to break bread with me right now, but I'm just saying, ladies, I'm not trying to control y'all, but some of us a long time ago forgot who God made us. Trying to get along with Karen. Karen can be anybody. Y'all think it's just a certain hue of skin or whatever, but I've seen some men act like Karen. Let me move on to five before I get shut down. Sacrifice. That means it's just two more and we close in the service. John 15, 13, NIV. Pastor warned y'all. Dr. 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 Davenport warned y'all. I don't know how to act. Brenda would have warned y'all too if y'all had asked her. John 15, 13, NIV. The Christ shares the following insight with his disciples. Greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for their friends. We need, now it's another side of this, Deacon Danny. We need to check our relationships because, yeah, we can ask ourselves, are we being a good friend? But are our friends being good to us? See, we often don't visit, Sister Karen, the duality of the role. Yeah, we, the only person you can change is yourself, so you should keep yourself accountable. But we also need to govern the friendships around us because some of the reasons why our, there's so much toxicity in our lives can be traced back to our companionship. Y'all done paid, let me just tell y'all. I'm speaking to somebody. This is going to connect in the Holy Spirit. I'm not trying to be deep or a prophet, but this is going to connect with someone. Let go. You're finished. Whoever that belongs to, you know it's you. Now, let me explain. Because you're about to go in spiritual debt and become spiritually bankrupt trying to support that friend that was never a good friend back to you. Do we have peers today? Peers. There's my auntie. Love you, darling. Peers are folks that meet you, heart, mind, soul, spirit, and oftentimes even stature in natural life. They meet you where you are. Lady Smalls, you ain't got to always get them a ride if they're your peer. You ain't got to always lend you and Lady Joy, my blessed wife. Y'all connect after this. You, you, don't, you don't always have to give them one of them sharp suits or whatever like that because they act like they ain't got nothing to wear. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be charitable, Brenda, but a peer meets you where you at. So many of us are drugged down because we drag in dead weight because they have no intentions of being your peer. So although you need to make sure you're a good friend, are people good friends to you? Oh, my God, I'm about to dismiss. Six, unity. We got one more after this. This goes without saying, together we stand and divided we fall. That has obviously become a cliche in this day and time. It only has lost significance because God's people require vision in order for unification to be realized. So we need to let the fathers go back to being the head of the household, ladies. Oh, I ain't afraid of none of y'all. I love you. I'm going to say it louder in case some of y'all had something wrong with your ear. We need to let the fathers become. God is the head, and then the man and the husband and the father is the head of the house. And then, wives, submit yourself to your husbands. Why? Because he is supposed to be submitted to God. Don't y'all submit yourself to somebody who don't know God? Y'all want to argue with me right now saying, um, 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 save sucking your teeth. I live by the word. If he submitted to God, submit unto him. If God got a problem with him, it's all right for you to have a problem with him. Just look in the mirror first. Finally, seven. Honesty. Some of y'all feel like I've been long-winded, but trust me, exact and truth in here feels like, my God, he's done? Will y'all pray for those who congregate with me? Praise the Lord. Seven and I'm closing. Honesty, which is what I tried to be with you all this morning. 
Amen? Honesty. In many regards today, beloved, we've stopped being truly honest with one another. And if we abandon truthfulness, scholars in here, y'all all appreciate this, then we restrict the margins of our possibility to make improvements. I'm going to repeat that because that's deep. If we abandon truthfulness, then we restrict the margins of our possibility to make improvements. And why is improvement, nece improvement necessary, you might ask. And I'm closing. It is because nothing that is good graduates to great and to greatness without improving upon what existed prior. We have to admit, give me something, Brian. We have to admit that we have room for improvement. Oh, Lord, we just got through talking about honesty about 10 minutes ago. Can y'all humble now and, 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 and use that praise on your lips and say, yes. Yeah, you're not saying yes to me. You're saying yes to your heavenly father. I, 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 can, I could do some things better. I could love better. I could be a better friend. I could, I could be a better parent. I, I, I haven't learned everything. I could be a better child. I could be a better sibling. Hello, somebody. I can be a better nephew. I can be a better niece. Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Are we honest with one another? Are y'all telling people what they want to hear? That's why some of us don't know who we are. Because someone who loves us, it's not that you're afraid of them. Some of y'all feel like, what's the point? They're not going to listen to me. You understand what I'm saying, baby, Dominique? Daddy, I don't want you to feel like that. We got to pray together. Papa got room for improvement. I don't want my oldest daughter, she's back there. I don't want her to feel like, well, I love him, but I can't talk to him because he's not going to listen to me no way. So I'm like, Lord, open my ears because I could stand to hear my daughter's better because I've got my, my son better because I, I, I've got perspectives and God have given me to try to raise them the best way I know how, but it ain't like they ain't got no points. Y'all not saying nothing to me and I'm trying to get y'all to this meal in the other room. Don't close with pride. Don't be arrogant. Don't say I ain't got to listen to him because he's not my pastor. Y'all pastor might be in the room. We need to be honest. Do I look fat in this dress? A uh, baby. I'm an equal opportunity informer. You know, you know, equal opportunity. <laughs> Let me tell you. Baby, I was thinking about wearing this T-shirt. We'll get on the bike and everything with the fellas. No, nah, bro, don't, you ain't leaving out the house with it. What used to be guns is like they ain't even pistols no more. They, they Okay, that's surface, and then we're going to ask you to stand. But Heavenly Father, are we open to hear him critique us about our relationship with him? Father, it don't seem like you heard my prayer, but you don't talk to me as much as you used to. Father, I put my request out that you save my children and they're, they're in peril. That you remember my loved ones that's struggling with addiction, but it's like you haven't answered me. Are you willing for the Holy Spirit to respond to you? It's not that I don't hear you, but the first thing I told you is my same answer. Now you keep asking me over and over again. Did you listen to what I said the first time? Stand on your feet. What they're playing is he loves us. Oh, how he loves. His position with regards to you, his children, has never changed. And so many of us are trying to be like something other than how his change or lack thereof with regards and conditionally and with regards to being unconditional to us. We're trying to be like any and everything when we need to be more like him. Can somebody agree with that? When we need to be, some of y'all are critical to your pastors, but you're trying a little bit too much to be like myself and like him than to be like him. We're just trying to get y'all to look at him, look past me, because you're going to find some flaws. And we get stuck on one another's flaws when he called all of us that are flawed people to look to the one that is not flawed.
He loves us. We need to take this love back to our family. We need to take this love back to our friendships. We got some inventory that we need to take. Some things we need to cut loose. Some folks we owe apologies. But it's okay because we're trying to get back to knowing who we are. He said, and Peter, I quote, wrote in his first epistle that you are a chosen generation. When somebody say, he picked me, look at your neighbor and say, he picked me? He picked, yeah, he picked you. You're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. Hello, somebody. It would have been all right if all of us came in here with purple and gold on because we're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. But we start, Sister Griffin, our, 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 our hearing gets a little iffy now when it gets to the next thing. We're a peculiar people. And that's where we struggle. Because when y'all fussing and when you're trying to make sure that people understand, oh, no, don't get it twisted. I'm him or I'm her. No, don't be insecure. The reality is you ain't always been comfortable being peculiar, have you? That means you stand out. That means you don't match. That means you ain't got on what everybody is wearing. That means you ain't doing what all of the rest of the ladies and what all of the rest of the fellows are doing. That means when you're called left, everybody else is going right and vice versa. We need to begin to become comfortable with the fact that we're peculiar. If we become comfortable with the fact that we're peculiar, then our children will get comfortable with the notion that we tell them that you're a peculiar person and that he chose you. So we're going to pray. We're not going to have you come to the altar right where you are. We're going to pray that you touch and agree. I'm going to ask that you do something that may make y'all feel uncomfortable. And I'm cool with y'all being uncomfortable because it's something that we need to take from here. There's a song that says, hold to his unchanging hand. But somebody in your life today, this is going to be symbolic. They need a hand. And oftentimes a hand up. And our hands are in our pocket. So this prayer is going to be quick. But I want you to grab the hand of your neighbor. If you're not close to somebody, get close to somebody in here. Because I want everybody connected in here today. Y'all don't have to reach all around the room, but just grab somebody's hand. Oh, how he loves, oh, how he loves, oh, how he loves. He loves us. Oh, how he loves. We're getting ready to pray. Oh, how he loves. You need to remember that. Oh, how. And I know you may not feel, but he loves. Yes, he does. You in a room full of people, and sometimes you feel all alone. But oh, we gon' pray. But I come to let you know. Yes, he does. He loves. I want you to know we're gonna pray. But you need to know. He Heavenly Father, we're asking that you restore us as servants in our family. I feel the Holy Spirit saying to say this in prayer. A lot of us are the prodigal's older brother. Move the bitterness because we were the ones that stayed home and tried to do the right thing. And now we're vexed with our younger brother and we don't understand your love for him when he went and sold and squandered everything and daddy and mama are still willing to give them the best because they're trying to be like you. And we also are asking father for grace for that prodigal. Some of us are afraid right now. We're standing on the outskirts of the city. Apostle Mathis, we're standing on the outskirts of the city because we're afraid that we're not going to be accepted. But God is saying, you can come home. You can come home. Give us to be greater servants 
in the embodiment of the word. And Heavenly Father, we're asking that you allow our friendships to embody love. Like you've loved us. Like you gave your son for us. Like you gave your son and he died for us. Like we're getting ready to commemorate because of resurrection time. We're asking right now, you give us the strength. We can't do it without you. And those that are in need of salvation, their hearts were pricked today. We're not having an altar call, but right where they stand. We believe that salvation is nigh them because of the sacrifice of your son on that cross who died but didn't stay dead and rose again but didn't just rise. He ascended to you where right now. He's sitting on your right hand making intercession for each and every one of us. Receive them with grace. Give them your free gift of salvation and save them. The Greek is sozos, which means you protect and preserve them until such a time that you return for us that we might live with you in infinite time. We ask these blessings in your son, the Christ's name, Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray.